Georgetown University professor Marsha Chatelain recently spoke to Ted Johnson, a senior fellow at the Brennan Center for Justice, about the impact that fast food franchises have had on African-American entrepreneurship and economic empowerment. Here's a portion of their discussion. I think that from our 2020 standpoint, it's so easy to say, how did people fall for this? Didn't they know that this wasn't going to lead to freedom? Well, it's easy for us to say that because we know the answer. <laughs> but if you think about 1968, mm -hmm. and you think about the question of what is around that corner and what's available to us, franchising makes perfect sense. Here's an opportunity, at the very least, to have a business in your community where you know that there is a, there is a black kind of head of state. Mm -hmm. And while this person may not be the perfect boss, you know that they will respect you in a way that working for a white person will probably not happen. And you also know that when you are spending money, at the very least, it's going into the hands of someone who might have less contempt for you than a white business owner. Because one of the things that I think we often miss in the history of the late 1960s is we focus so much on um, residential white flight and the loss of tax revenue, we forget what business white flight does to a lot of communities as well, even before uprisings. People do not have a lot of consumer choices. And so the franchise does provide that. But I think more than anything else, the rhetoric of the time in which black self-determination, opening channels to black empowerment, worked for everyone. Because on one hand, it used a lot of the language of civil rights to talk about success, but it didn't threaten any type of um, it didn't challenge uh, people who were resistant to in integration. Right. And so by 68 and 69 and 70, people have seen very little gains from the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Voter participation is opening up as a result of 65, but you don't have a critical mass of candidates, black candidates that are running, that people are so invested in the system. And someone says, well, how about this? How about we give you an opportunity to keep your dollars inside the community? That's actually a pretty yeah. big deal. And I think from our standpoint, we can say, well, surely it doesn't build new schools and it doesn't do all these things. But at the very least, it provides an opportunity to imagine ownership in a place that isn't just losing businesses and losing opportunities, is completely stripped and gutted and alienated from the very basic services that citizens should expect. Right. You know, if we think about like the arson, and we, you know, we know major cities in which lots that were burned out in 68 are still burnt out lots, right? So if you can imagine something new appearing in a community that has been so gutted, you can understand why people from a lot of different um, ideological backgrounds were thinking, okay, let's give this a chance. To watch the rest of this conversation, visit our website, booktv.org, and search for Marsha Chatelain or the title of her book, Franchise, using the box at the top of the page.